There are some times after a game, being an international fan, where you just want to go to bed. The match finishes, 3.40 a.m. here now. You just want to curl up in your nice warm blankets and sometimes forget that the games happen. Not this morning. 3-1, Arsenal over Spurs in the North London Derby. And I said in our preview show, this game was huge. Absolutely huge. Would have been huge if we lost, but is even more important now that we've won because this game is going to provide a massive springboard for the rest of the season. We had a rough start, really rough start, but this victory, what it does to the fans, what it does to the squad, what it does to Mikel Arteta, um, absolutely huge. I'm going to try and break the review and the reaction into three parts. The first half, the second half, and some interesting tidbits. Because to me, this was a match of two halves. Uh, The first half was all about attack. The second half was all about managing the result, um, seeing the game through, using our, our expertise and our skill to get the result over the line. Because in previous reviews, I've spoken about how um, the performance doesn't matter so much when you get the result. This game was a combination of both. We got the performance. We got the result. There, there should be absolutely no complaints. Let's get into the first half. In terms of the lineups, there were no shocks for me. I expected Granit Xhaka to come back in. I expected uh, Aaron Ramsdale to start. And he had basically nothing to do in the first half. Mm-hmm. So so let's put that out there. Um, and I did expect to see Aubameyang leading the line. And every player in that first half did their job to a T, uh, absolutely to a T. We played this game with so much attacking movement um, and confidence. You could tell that the boys were up for it. And I think two of the unsung heroes of that, because you're going to hear Saka get plaudits, you're going to hear Aubameyang get plaudits, uh, certainly Emil Smith-Rowe. But I think that base of Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka was really important in giving those guys ahead the confidence to go and attack Spurs relentlessly. Um, so big ups to Xhaka and Partey because without those guys at the back, at the base, um, we wouldn't have seen those overlapping runs, those forward balls. And that's not saying that those two only did defensive work because Thomas Partey put in some brilliant balls, uh, one one in particular to Aubameyang that was cross-field, uh, but Orba's first touch let him down on that. I thought we were really attacking. Um, Bakayo Saka, for me, showed why he needs to play on the right exclusively. He's an excellent player on the left. He's, he's an excellent player anywhere on the field. But on the right, he looks so much more lethal. Um, he had spurs on the back foot. He's, he's cutbacks for the goal. He's forward runs. Uh, he, he was really up for this one, Bakayo Saka. Aubameyang today showed that maybe he can lead the line as that front man. He won so many aerial duels today, which is something that I've been really critical of him for in the past, that he doesn't win those headers and those physical battles. But he did today. Uh, He did. I'm, I'm by no means saying he's a target man for the whole season, but he can do it. He definitely can do it. And his, his little flick for Emil Smith throw on his goal was just absolutely superb. So much class in the touch. Uh, Emil Smith-Rowe on the left, again, not the biggest fan of him out there, but today it's hard to say anything negative because it simply clicked. And maybe him on the left works much better when it's a Bamiang in the middle and Saka on the right because you could tell there was really good chemistry there. All three of the goals basically followed a simple structure. Fast pace, forward movement, get the defender on the back foot and cut it in for someone to run on and finish. Obviously, Saka's goal had a little bit of a level of hilarity with uh, good old Harry Kane getting the assist on that. It was was great to see him assist a Bukayo Saka goal at his old club, Arsenal. So thank you, Harry, if you're watching its football thing. I really appreciate that. Tomiyasu is someone I want to give a shout-out to. Now, the second half for me was more about defence. 
But when I look at him over the whole game, he did come in as a bit of an unknown. Um, but he was an absolute brick wall. No one was getting past him. It, it didn't matter what you threw at Tomiyasu in this match. No one got past. He, he reminded me of Gandalf in Lord of the Rings with the old you shall not pass. Uh, that was him. So big ups to Tomiyasu as well. Let's get into the second half. This, to me, was about maturity. It was about game management. And it was about every player on that team digging deep. And they did that because, by and large, we kept Spurs relatively quiet. They had lots of ball. Uh, but I can't quite remember off the top of my head Aaron Ramsdale having to make too many blinding saves. There was one. Um, off a Lucas Moura shot that took a deflection and was dipping over. He seemed to be in the air for forever, and he got a great touch to it that put it onto the crossbar. Aaron Ramsdale is Arsenal's number one now. Uh, there's no argument about that. His distribution's brilliant, uh, and he's clutch. Like He seems to be a clutch keeper who's passionate about the club too. Like after some of the great saves, you could see him chest bumping with players, giving them a hit on the back, geeing them up. That's what you need. You need your keeper to lead. Um, They did score a goal. Son, uh, it, it, for me, was enjoyable to see Spurs get desperate. Desperate teams um, push on when a player's down with a knee injury. Uh, Xhaka was down. Even Lucas Moura had stopped to support Granite Xhaka because he realised what had happened. And, of course, good old Spurs kept attacking and Son scored and celebrated his little heart out. Unfortunately, he won't get any points for that. Um, you could see Kane getting desperate, probably frustrated at being pocketed by um, good old Gabriel all game. Started to do his old pushing, shoving, diving, mm -hmm. looking for penalties. So no shocks there from him. Um, but what did shock me was Arteta's game management. He showed that he he's learned from some of the mistakes. By no means am I saying that we're going to win a Champions League under Arteta at this point or that he's the world's best manager, but he's learning. And when you have someone who's inexperienced in that role, you just want to see improvement and you want to see development. And I thought the way that the squad managed it with Ramsdale slowing it down, players taking a little bit longer to get up, those footballing dark arts, um, that's perfectly okay. That's how you lock down those three points. Arteta made some good subs um, to, again, slow it down, bring some fresh legs on, and I think everyone involved can be proud of themselves. I'm not even going to try and pick uh, a man of the match because every player did their job to perfection, and we frustrated Spurs. We we were the better team from the first whistle to the last. So ah, it's absolutely happy days, happy, happy, happy days. The last thing I wanted to mention was a couple of interesting little tidbits. Um, the spirit of the king, Thierry Omri, he, he was in the stands today with Daniel Ek, um, Spotify owner, someone who potentially could be interested in purchasing the club and freeing us from the Cronkies. It was nice to see them in the stands and uh, that little Aubameyang celebration on the sliding on the knees with the chest out. Um, yeah, a little, little bit of a throwback to the days when Thierry Henry would terrorise Spurs. The fans today, you know what I said? I wouldn't give a man of the match, but I'm absolutely going to give a man and woman of the match to all of the home fans there today. Absolutely immense. The stadium was rocking. Um, I'm sure they made it very uncomfortable for Spurs and gave the team that extra boost they needed when they were closing the game out. So massive big ups to the fans because they rocked the Emirates. Quick word on Nuno and Arteta. Funny to think that Spurs, who were winning the league three rounds ago, are now below us on the table. Just goes to show that it's a long season. Anything can happen. Nuno, he might be that first man who gets sacked this season. We'll have to wait and see. But for Arteta, a big game in his development. I'm sure he'll be breathing easy. I'm sure this gives him some confidence, helps him galvanise his belief in his structures and galvanise a squad because you could see at the end what it meant to them. 
And, and that's what football's about. It, it's about getting out there, fighting for the win, and and working together to get there. So absolute big ups to them. Mikel Arteta, a big moment for him in his Arsenal managerial career. And I, for one, was personally impressed. I was impressed with the, the squad. I was impressed with the movement. I was impressed with his passion. And no one ever questions that Arteta loves the club and wants to succeed. It's just about finding ways to make that happen. And if we can pull out more performances like this with the advantages of no European football, um, well, I say advantages tongue-in-cheek, but with no European football and our focus primarily on domestic league and competitions, who knows where this season could go. But I'm looking forward to chatting with the boys about this on Tuesday. Check their match reactions if you haven't already. Please like and subscribe. Um, Common Arsenal Spurs, can we play you every week? Because that was bloody brilliant. Have a good one, everyone.